Welcome to Getting to the Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today I am interviewing two members of Groundwork Kitchen's culinary training program, director Eugene Levy and chef Shivanya Bracken. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Shivanya. I'm the training chef. And I am... Ellen, I'm the program director of Brandmark Kitchen. I'm, I'm switching it up a little bit this year. No, <laughs> but um, I want to thank both of you for stopping by. And I had the opportunity to learn a little bit more about this program. So it's going to be really cool. Um, but in it, tell me tell me about what your roles are in, in respectively within the program and what's the mission of the program overall? Sure. Well, uh, the mission of the training program is really to prepare people for careers in food service um, and especially to provide the kind of supports that people need so that, that like structural barriers to employment, um, you know, aren't as debilitating um, as we know they can be. So uh, we are uh, really targeting um, anyone who, well, really any who wants to work in food service. So that could be people with experience, could be someone who has no experience, um, does not need to be anyone with a high school diploma, um, as long as they have an interest in cooking and think that, you know, their next job should be in the food service industry, then we want to help that person reach their goals. And um, I am the training chef. I, I, I train the students. <laughs> what I do day in, day out, all the time. <laughs> I, I don't know why, like immediately I started thinking of something from like back in the day, maybe like fame or something. This is where you guys are going to learn how to cook and you're going to sweat in the kitchen. I, I wanted it to be that, Ooh. but it's not. Oh, I hope I'm not. I'm not that <laughs> tough. <laughs> but, well, it's definitely sweating in, in the kitchen. It is it's hot in there. And we wear long chef jackets, long sleeve chef jackets for safety. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're definitely sweating some. I like, I like to hear it. I mean, I I want to say it was a few what maybe maybe a few months back where I always when I travel I go to where where good food is. I was like, all right, let me check this. What's the stars like? What's the reputation? Right. And I started wondering. I was in Rhode Island. I was like, huh? It's like it was like maybe what is it? Uh, what is it? Uh, Johnson and Wales is up there. And I was like. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Because this is right here. So it has to be a concentration of good pe people within this industry here. So the quality has to be there. And, and when I was reading over, like, ultimately, I think the, the goal of the, uh, the the program, that's what I was hoping would happen here. Like, this is like the groundwork of that type of vibe and that energy here. I would say that we more so lean to like, I'm a culinary school graduate sure. and culinary school is two to four years long. It's much more intense. Um, it's also much more detailed in the things that you learn. And when it comes down to it, our program is 12 yeah. weeks and we are giving you the skills and hopefully helping you with discipline. And like Ellen mentioned, we're also helping you with barriers to hopefully get you to employment. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to culinary, well, before I went to culinary school, I applied for culinary jobs and I was told that I didn't have any experience, which is true uh, because I was coming from the world of banking. And I said, you need some professional training. So I went to culinary school. And then after I went to culinary school, I was told that I had no work experience. Right. So I couldn't get hired. Um, and I was eventually hired by one of the chefs who switched over to another portion of his culinary career. So the hope of our program is that we give you the basic culinary skills you learn to get you to employment. And then we also give you training in our restaurant via catering or traditional retail um, food service. And that will hopefully get you employed without those barriers. That's great. Yeah. To build on what Chef Shivanya said, um, we kind of describe our training to applicants or potential students as like a food service essentials, um, almost like a boot camp, right? Because it's so short. We say nobody's going to graduate from here with a culinary, a diploma in culinary arts. Um, we're really preparing people to get the job that they need to, you know, continue learning, um, discover what part of the food service industry is really the best fit for them, um, but also providing supports along the way. So our uh, students have the opportunity to earn five different industry recognized credentials. So hopefully they don't, you know, have to kind of run into the same experiences that Chef Shivani did when she was first starting out. Right. So we get some certifications or certificates on the resume. Um, she's actually our, uh, you know, registered instructor proctor for some serve safe, um, and American hotel and lodging educational Institute, uh, credentials. 
Um, and then they get that hands-on training, yeah. right? Because they're literally training right next to our restaurant employees. So we hope that they graduate here with kind of a little bit of a leg up in kind of all the areas that they need. Wonderful. So I read, I read that the model of the, the, the program is implemented in nearly 60 other facilities across the country. How does it fit with the, I guess, the culinary landscape within Baltimore? Because, um, like, you know, I, I've, I've learned that Baltimore is more of like a restaurant driven, like location versus a chef driven location. So the opportunities are there, but maybe people aren't getting, so, so maybe speak on that a little bit. Like, how does the program fit within the landscape in the city? Sure. Um, yeah. So we know from all the other programs that are engaged in just the Catalyst Kitchens Network and food service job training that this is kind of a worthwhile model that can really help um, and provide needed opportunity. And we even have a couple of, um, you know, kind of programs in this area, in the Baltimore area that are similar. Um, we actually collaborate with them a lot. They, you know, us starting out, we talk to them about lessons they've learned to try to help us out. Um, and I would say what kind of makes Groundwork Kitchen different is the fact that the training takes place in a restaurant environment, yeah. right? So there's um, s- some existing opportunities that, you know, people can train in like making contract meals um, or, you know, based out of like Maryland Food Bank. It's just a different type of culinary experience. Whereas um, if someone, you know, knew that they're really interested in especially in front of house training, yeah. um, then shadowing servers or like in a quick service carry out um, operation is a great place to get more specific you know, training to that. Um, so I, I, I think it kind of is a unique opportunity that is a good fit for some people's goals, right? And I would also say, I'm going to say something controversial. I know, right? I was taking a back briefly. I would say Baltimore, <laughs> as somebody who has um, not traveled as much as I'd like to, but definitely been all up and down the East Coast, our food scene is comparable to anybody. Yeah. I said what I said. We're comparable to New York. Mm -hmm. We're comparable to D.C. The Baltimore food scene has absolutely exploded in the past 22 years. You name the type of restaurant, you can find it here. But what a lot of restaurant owners, what a lot of chefs, what a lot of back of the house people say is, is that we now don't have the opportunity that we did 20 years ago to have growing pains. Mm -hmm. Like the internet exists, people's opinions exist, and it is extremely beneficial just to have people in your kitchen that know what they're doing. And our students leave with a serve safe handler, so they're not going to, you know, cause foodborne illnesses or sicknesses. They know how to keep safe and clean in the kitchen. They are working in a busy professional environment and all of those things are so helpful and so beneficial to any type of kitchen that you're going to work in. And with such a continually exploding and growing food scene, you need those qualified workers. Yeah. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, you know, I've had some conversations that I was telling you all about uh, my theme for upcoming month of food critics and, and people in the scene and they go off mic. Have you been in this place? I was like, no, I haven't. It's like, it's trash. I'm like, whoa, you can't say that. I was like, you wrote a great review about it, though. Yeah, I got paid to. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, Ooh, but no, but it's man. but it's interesting, like that power, what that power looks like. So definitely I, I get your point, um, chef, when it comes to like these things have to be sorted because the expectation in the internet is very, it's very quick. People have like expectations. So I read, I read that the first cohort for the program graduated in December. Um, Tell me, tell me about that experience. And um, you already touched on what, what kind of training um, or background folks come in with. So, so more broadly speak on that experience from um, both of your perspectives, I guess, being a, a training chef, but also being the, like the program director or have you tell me more about that. Alan, you want to go? Do you want me to um, go? Sure. Yeah. I would just, I, it was an amazing thing to be around. Um, we had a great group of students. Um, Chef Shivanya did a great job. Um, they were so engaged. They, lo- you know, I never thought that I would walk into the student lounge and hear people on their lunch, like talking about food safety, right. But they're so interested and engaged. Um, they learned a lot. And they made delicious food along the way. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of work in launching this restaurant, literally building the building, assembling the team. Um, and it, it was kind of great to just watch our, gra- you know, now their graduates kind of like run with that and succeed. Um, and now it's kind of, you know, the work's just beginning because now we need to support them and 
find them jobs and, uh, you know, continue to support them after that. Um, how about for you, Shivanya? It was, it was just a pleasure. It really was. And the reason why they're surprised in my voice is because I remember culinary school for me was just a bear. It was just a lot of clashing personalities. It was, um, I worked all, I worked from 8.30 to 4 and was in class from 5 to 11 at night. So I was constantly just exhausted. Uh, and it was hard. And I'm not saying that you know, like our students didn't have their challenges, but they were so excited and so happy and so pleasant and just it sounds trite, just utterly thirsty for knowledge. Like they wanted to know. They wanted to know all of the oils, all of the vinegars, all of the cheeses, all of the meals, all of the safety. Like, you know, it was just so amazing that, I mean, we were just so incredibly lucky with our first cohort that we just had people who were just on the same train with us going to the same location of success. It was really amazing. That's that's great. I, I mean, I am a food nerd, so I you know might be hitting you guys up when we pull up. I have my own branded apron, has my logo on it. Ooh. It's great. Um, but uh, yeah, like I think kind of learning all of the stuff and realizing and again, in conversations I've had and experiences I've had that food and kind of the service around food, the the dynamic around food it's it's a language you, you show people that you love mm -hmm. them through food you show people that you care about them um or even having a meal with someone those things are important so people wanting to learn it's like yeah this is a new language i'm learning i'm becoming a polyglot this is great <laughs> yeah so chef shivania uh please share with me an example of how um how a, how maybe a coach helped you or someone helped mentor you and it's a it's a a b c question so i'll just start off there before just inundating you with the full question OK, uh, I would say I've been extremely lucky throughout my entire career just to have people kind of point at me and say, you can do this because imposter syndrome is real. Yes, I am what I am. I'm black. I'm a woman. I started my culinary career later than a lot of other people. I also didn't start it in the traditional way. Uh, I didn't start you know, washing dishes in the back of the house. I was in the front of the house for three months. The catering chef quit and then I got immediately promoted. They're like, you can do this. <laughs> and from that point on, it's just been a lot of people telling me that you can do this and you belong here. And I've had multiple people do that. I'm in a great organization called Just Call Me Chef, which is a bunch of black women chefs. And we give people give each other a lot of support and a lot of business ideas and just sharing of culinary ideas and trends and everything. So I have been incredibly lucky that I'm just utterly surrounded by support uh, professionally and personally. A big shout out to Chef Cat. <laughs> yeah. So in addition to that, uh, speak on some of the some of the training that you're you're doing there at the Institute. I mean, at the at the program, like what does that training look mm -hmm. like? What does it entail? I'm I'm keying in because I watch a lot of Food Network cooking shows. Oh. But like uh, what what does that look um, look like? And uh, the other part would be, um, is there any training that really keys in on maybe some of those more high tension situations that someone can face when they first get in there and get that job and, right. you know, things like that? I would say the training is definitely your basics. Yeah. So like most people don't hold a knife correctly. Most people, um, you know, definitely do not engage in food safety in any way, shape or form in their home. It, it's real fast and loose in people's houses, which I understand. And also just the opening up of experiences. It is very, very easy to get in the culinary rut. Everybody does it. You get used to eating the same things, going the same places and thankfully, I had a wonderful class who was actually eager to get out of the rut. Like within the first couple of weeks, they were like, you know, when are we going to try these new things? When are we going to, you know, try stuff we never had before? And I was like, whoa, you guys, <laughs> like, I promise we're going to get to all of those things. And we definitely did. And also just Ellen will tell you, Ellen and I are really great. Um, we're two sides of the same coin. We have a lot of shared ideas. Ellen is very empathetic and very understanding um, her professional career has really just given her so much strength for these students to give them what they need. And I'm a chef. So, <laughs> like, 
Um, not a screamer and a hollerer. Never going to do that. That's absolutely ridiculous. But um, if I give you a recipe, you got to do yeah. it. Yeah. You read twice, you make once. Or you read it five times, you make it one time. And I'm going to give you that recipe. And you're definitely, like, obviously allowed to ask me questions. I don't have the expectation of perfection. But you're going to make what I told you to make. Yeah. And... The students overall, I would say, handled that very well. There's like a, sometimes they're reminders. They're like, well, what do I do next? And I'm like, it's on that paper. <laughs> that's great. It's on that paper. That's great. Uh, <laughs> so that's definitely um, in my culinary career. I definitely had to deal with that often. So they had to deal with it um, in the program for sure. It sounded like someone doing like carpentry or what have you, like, you know, measure twice, cut once. It's kind of that that vibe. Yes. Um, yes. Now. Meat and plus. <laughs> <laughs> I've mispronounced that many a times and I've had chefs uh, correct me. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not how you say that. I was like, all right, that's we chef or what have you. Uh, so the last thing I want to, want to ask regarding to like the, 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 the training and the kitchen experience. Uh, I, I hear that, that the kitchen can be funny. So has, has was there something that came out? Maybe like someone was like, that's, that's not baking soda. That's that's salt. Like, what are you doing? Is was there like a funny situation that you come across that that sticks out about this recent cohort that you're like, all right, you're learning, but this is funny. <laughs> oh, probably like every other day, honestly. <laughs> like, just, you know, like somebody would, you know, oh, chef, this piece of equipment isn't working, and I'm like, is it plugged up? And they're like, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> just um, or just um. Uh, I wanted to, see, or just like imagining that I wanted something extremely intricate and difficult. Like one day we made uh, black beans and rice mm. uh, to go with peri peri chicken. Mm. And I was like, you know, I want, you know, here's a quick recipe for black beans and rice. Um, and sometimes I would give students the freedom to like season things as they want. And they're like, well, what do I do? And I'm like, well, it's black beans and rice. And I'm like, how do you want me to make it? And I'm like, black beans and rice. <laughs> but. And we had one really great student who is uh, very talented, very smart, um, extreme. You know who I'm talking about, Ellen. And she would try to hide in the dish room. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I would be like, where is she? She is not yeah. where she is. She'd be like, oh, chef, I decided that I wanted to help out a little bit back here. It's because she wasn't confident. She wasn't nervous. But she would assume that I wasn't paying attention to everybody's location. Yeah. So she would never be back there for more than five minutes. So I'd be like, go <laughs> back where you're supposed to be. <laughs> it was a it was a daily thing. Have everything and everyone in its place. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, including literally people. <laughs> so so, Ellen, um, speak on um, any of like the recruiting side. Like I understand from what you were saying earlier that it's kind of like people who have an interest and a passion towards towards cooking and towards wanting to be in the industry. But what what does recruiting look like? Is there recruiting and, and what, what does that kind of look like for the program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we essentially have an application that's online. Um, it's pretty quick and we, you know, we never kind of shut it down. So applications are always, always sort of coming in. We've already got some people applying for our next class in April. Um, we have very few, um, I, I think relatively eligibility criteria. So if someone's a good fit for our program, um, if they're at least 18 years old, authorized to work in the U S after graduation. Um, and if they, you know, kind of articulate that they want to work in food service, they're interested yeah. in this. Um, I think I said before that there's no requisite experience or educational preparation. Um, it's really just, you know, uh, whether someone is kind of prepared to come in and be with us for 12 weeks and do this training. Um, and we have even, you know, some supports kind of to help people get to that point if they're not already. So, um, you know, Paul's place is really just one block away. There's walking case management. We, uh, kind of invite everyone who fills out an application in to do an information session. So we walk them around the building, let them see the environment, ask questions, teach them all about the program. And then, you know, kind of point out that uh, if you have trouble getting us a copy of like your vital documents, Paul's Place case managers can help you replace those. Um, so even if someone's not gonna join us right now, you know, we wanna connect them to the supports that will let them, you know, join us later. So for some people that means they need to line up um, a certain, you know, different childcare arrangements so that they can be available in that middle of the day. Um, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, it, it actually brought up a secondary question related back to um, Paul's place. How, how did that that uh, relationship uh, come up, come about? Yeah, um, so probably interesting. We're actually, uh, 
I guess we are, you know, we are separate, but we really are Paul's place. Um, so groundwork kitchen is like the newest program of Paul's place. Okay. Yeah. So Paul's place is a community outreach center in Southwest Baltimore. That's going to celebrate its 40th anniversary of providing services, um, to the neighborhood next or this year, it's 2022. Wow. <laughs> um, and, you know, the case management department over there has been helping uh, people connect to employment supports, job training programs. Um, you know, I mentioned vital documents, a lot of uh, services to meet basic needs. And this is really a continuation of that. So the newest sort of employment focused program is Groundwork Kitchen. Um, it's definitely really different than a lot of the other programming that they have going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're owned and operated by Paul Space. Great. I have two more questions before I get to rapid fire questions and give you fine folks your afternoons back. Uh, so let's see. Um, this, I think this is one, I think this one is for you, chef. Um, so I read that there is a three course meal uh, for the uh, graduation components, yeah. the graduation ceremony. I refer to it colloquially as a culinary thesis. What was that three course meal? <laughs> Oh, that was like two weeks ago. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a food guy. I don't know what to tell you. Do you remember it was the, the salmon and the chicken? Oh, right. We did um, potato crusted salmon with potatoes of gratin and green beans. Uh, the does, Did we? I think it was just two courses though, right? Two we course meal. No, yeah. we did. We had a salad. You're absolutely right. Good Lord. So we had um, just a garden salad and uh, the students made the vinaigrette, which a lot of people really took to and enjoyed learning how to do yeah. and would make tons of vinaigrettes anytime we had a salad for lunch that day. And we had a cheesecake with a creme brulee filling and then with caramelized sugar on top. It was a really nice meal. It sounds delicious. I, I'm sitting here like trying to keep my, my composure. Uh, you say you say cream brulee. I was like, what am I supposed to do with myself here? Uh, all right, that's, that actually answered that just answered the question. I was just like, yo, just curious food. What's what's up with that? Um, oh, we the students really put out some food that I'm truly truly proud of. Like they just did such an amazing job. We had um, I tried to take them around the world as much as I could. So we had some African cuisine. We did French. We did Italian. We did, um, I think we did like tacos and mm -hmm. a lot of bread, yeah. a lot of desserts, um, which was intimidating for some of the students. They never baked bread before. One of our students took to it like a fish in the water. She just <laughs> was absolutely amazing at baking bread. And um uh, to the point that she was considering a different type of culinary career by the mm. time she left, which was amazing. Yeah, I, I've always kind of look at it like I'm quasi food snobbish, but I, I always kind of look at it like, how can I learn? How can I be around chefs to kind of learn something? I think mm -hmm. being in an environment, chefs generally they're like, yeah, this is how you do this. Like, oh, yeah. Tell me more. Sitting there with like a little note using ketchup as, you know, a pen. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, 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 I always compare like baking to like like science or what have you it's very specific you could throw oh, something no, it off is, it. it is literally science i am a food i'm i'm a chef yeah i am i am not a baker <laughs> i would always tell my students that is not my ministry uh i would rather chew a jean jacket than me a professional baker it is that's great yeah Cooking meals or catering restaurant. I can, I'm comfortable with all that. I can do all of that, but I have assisted a friend who is a professional baker and I was freaked out the whole time because we were making somebody's wedding cake. And I'm like, what if we forgot the baking soda? Like there's no fixing it. We yeah. would literally have to make the cake all over again and just tell the people they can't have a wedding cake. If I put too much salt in a soup, I can fix that easy a number of different ways. Mm. But if you mess up something baking, like you're, you're just done. That's it. I, I look at like calling no. cooking generally with, with some, you know, deviations is kind of like akin to like jazz. You can improv on it. You can yes, do no, certain exactly. things with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is the last question before I get into the weird, weird questions and rapid fire questions. Um, so, um, from my vantage point in, in kind of even talking with you, with you all that the program is, is a great source for the community. It's a, it's another tool to kind of solve some of the, um, unemployment issues we have here. Um, and I 
what sort of and, I, and granted this is a you know recent cohort but what sort of employment are graduates like pursuing you kind of touched on like one person was maybe changing what they were interested in but what kind of uh, positions are they pursuing and where do you see like groundwork moving in let's say the next few years or what have you granted i know we're in covid and things are goofy right now but mm -hmm. where do you see kind of things uh, going well, I think Chef Shivanya actually lined up um, a great kind of variety of guest speakers who came in and talked to the students. So, um, you know, part of what we wanted to give them is exposure to think outside of just food service and restaurants. Right. Obviously, that could be a great opportunity. And I think we have one or two students who are thinking of working in restaurants, but um, others really enjoyed learning from, say, like the uh, chef and like a food and beverage director at local hospitals came in and talked about like why go into healthcare. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, there was a someone who uh, a local chef who started her own catering company that, you know, I think all the all the students were kind of starstruck after uh, hearing them. Um, was it Chef D came in and spoke to them? Um, so yes. uh, Chef David and Chef Tanya came mm -hmm. in from um, they opened Ida B's and now they have a catering company called Heirloom. And then Chef yeah. uh, Stacia Mason uh, from Mason Catering came in and spoke to the students as well. That's great. Yeah. And so, you know, right after we have a guest speaker, I, I would hear from the students like, oh, well, now I'm thinking of doing this. Now I'm thinking of this. I know a, a lot of them kind of see uh, their career as a way that can help them, you know, travel. Um, we actually had a couple of students who really have their eye on working for a cruise line. Um, All righty. Well, thank you for that. That that helps a lot. Now, now to these rapid fire questions. So mm -hmm. this this kind of goes back to what you said earlier, uh, Chef. I mm -hmm. said what I said. You know, it's kind of that. It's kind of that. <laughs> this is the energy with these questions. So okay. um, I'll ask a question. You can just give me whatever the answer is. You don't have to provide any extra context unless you really want to. And okay. these are these are for both of you because it's going to seem like weird. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite dish to cook and why? Mm -hmm. breakfast uh, because you can make it anything you want you can do it fancy you can do it fun it can be sweet it can be savory uh, you can get as high end as you can possibly get and take a couple of hours to make it or you can take 10 minutes and put something together so maybe not one specific thing but breakfast in general i like it pasta um oh. as someone with a non-culinary background it's an approachable dish you can uh, you can you can wow someone with Okay, I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is for you, Chef. Um, favorite dish to train with? Like to say, look, this is what we're going to start off to train on. Uh, chickens. Okay. Yeah, I, a lot of people in my class, surprisingly enough, had never handled a whole chicken before, had never yeah. cut up a whole chicken before. Yeah. And you get a lot of skill out of that. It's knife practice. You're using a bony knife, so it's a different type of knife. Uh, you learn different cuts of chicken and different preparations of it. So it's one thing that you're doing, which is like cutting up a chicken, but you're learning a lot of different techniques and things to go with it. Great. That That's really good. So it's uh, versatile, multiple purposes. Every, everything can kind of be covered in one one bird. And it's right. better than turkey because turkey is not my favorite bird. Uh, uh, it's not. Turkey is thumbs down. Got to make it right. It's, it gets one part of the it. year. It gets one part of the year. No. Yes, <laughs> that is true. Yes. It's the Oscars. Uh, so um, for both of you, how, how would you describe your um, management styles? Like in terms of working with others, in terms of managing a program, how would you describe that? Um, I'd like to say collaborative. Um, I, you know, we have a good team and I think we put out the best product by hearing everybody and what they have, what they have to offer. Okay. Um, I don't have to per se manage in the same way as a staff with this um, particular job, but I would say that my sort of management style and also teaching style is that I want everybody to know I, I don't like it when people are trying to like hold on to the secrets or whatever they think they might be. It is just beneficial to everyone. If everybody knows what's going on, if everybody has a clue, if everyone is informed from a manager's standpoint, it means that everything isn't on me and it gives anyone 
under my care, the opportunity to learn and possibly the opportunity to grow. And for my students, it means that they're getting just as informed about the culinary industry and the trends as I am, which is helpful to them. Wonderful. Last question. Uh, what is the strongest characteristic needed for some, a, a leader or someone that's going into the culinary or food services, tangential kind of industries? What do you think that that leading trait is, that leading characteristic is? I'd say grace. Um, we've seen a lot of emerging food service professionals that hold themselves to a very high expectation and, you know, Chef Giovanni did a great job of really like coaching them that, you know, like you're here to practice, you're here to learn. If you were perfect, then there'd be no point in you coming here. Um, and I, I think that same kind of outlook attitude can take somebody really far. Great. Uh, I would say desire. Um, it's the desire to be in the industry, uh, with all of its ups and downs and the desire to as best as you can, given the circumstances that we're all in to take advantage and to take charge of where you want to go at with your life. There's a lot of desire. Delightful. That's great. Mm -hmm. I, I love both of those. Um, yeah. And, and both of those are things that people don't find all the time. They have to come from you. You have to have, you, have, you can learn grace, but you have to at least start off with a point of like, look, you put your put your ego to the side a little bit. You're here to learn. Mm -hmm. And um, you, do you want to be here? You know what I mean? Like, do you really yeah. want, why are you here? All right. Uh, so with that, um, I'm going to invite both of you to plug. Where's the website, location, all of that good stuff. Give us, you know, give us the, the, the deets. Because, you know, some people have aprons here. They might want to learn how to debone okay. a full chicken or turkey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so feel free. Please, please. Shameless plug. Uh, we are located right in the heart of Baltimore City in Pigtown at 925 Washington Boulevard. Our website is groundworkkitchen, all one word, dot com. And you can apply for our culinary training program and find out all about us and give us a call or send us an email if you have any questions. So there you have it, folks. So for Ellen Levy and Chef Shivania Bracken, I am Rob Lee saying that there is art in and around Baltimore. You just got to look for it. <laughs>